What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Courageous Church. Let's give it up for Jesus today. I want to welcome everybody right now at the north side. What's up, north side? One church in many locations. Praise God, everybody online, Facebook. Give it up one more time for Jesus. So I am using a hand-free device microphone today, and I don't know what to do with my hands. They, I got something I want to read to you right now. This is an amazing card that came to the church, and just listen up, okay? Dear Courageous Church, say, that's me. That's me. All right. We want to thank you for your congregation and the $50 you gave everyone to bless people with. We had a house fire on the 14th of December. We were not home at the time, so we're safe, but we lost four dogs. My husband and I lost all of our clothing and major damage to our bathroom and bedroom with smoke and water damage to the rest of the house. I think we've received at least seven envelopes. I've lost count. Seven envelopes, I've lost count, from your church by members wanting to bless us, wanting to bless us. Most of them I don't even know, but they heard about us somehow. God is amazing and meets you right where you need it most. Thank you for wanting to reach the community. If we didn't already have a church home, we'd be checking yours out. Just a matter of time, people. Just a matter of time. <laughs> and so, guys, give yourselves another hand. What's up? February is Black History Month. We want to honor Black History Month and all the Black History makers that are in our church. Let's give it up for Black History Month, February. And what is awesome, we have 131 new giving commitments because of the 90-day tithe challenge in this First Fruits series. 131 new families that said, we're going to give. Praise God, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And so um, I intended on stopping this series but it never got off of me. It never got off of me. And I got something I want to share with you today. So are you ready? Okay. I'm going to preach differently than I normally do because I've got use of my hands. And uh, I'm going to use some Old Testament stuff that shows us kind of a, a principle or a way of thinking. And so I'm going to lay a, pastor's going to lay a foundation today, am I? Pastor's going to lay a foundation of the Holy Ghost. And so y'all pay attention, all right? Adam and Eve in the garden. My title today is Don't Ride God's Donkey, okay? Look at your neighbor say, Don't Ride God's Donkey. Anybody remember the 69 boys from back in the day? I got one. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. The rest of you have no clue. Do not go to YouTube, whatever you do. The first tree, God said, belongs to me in the garden. The first tree belongs to me. He told Adam and Eve in the garden, there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. That's mine. God said, the first is mine. This series is called First Fruits, okay? Abel was the first son of the first family, Adam and Eve, and the Bible says that he brought an offering of his first fruits, of his firstlings of his flock. And back in the day, they did animal sacrifice. If the Jews are ever able to rebuild their temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, they will begin animal sacrifices again. It's part of the old covenant, okay? Jesus took all that away. Thank God we're not bringing in a bunch of animals to lay down on the altar because Jesus Christ is the sacrificial lamb that took away the, 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 the problem of our sin, okay? But before Jesus comes, and if you don't believe in Jesus and you're a Jew, you gotta go down to the temple and kill a lamb because you sinned. Wouldn't that be just so convenient? Well, I'm gonna sin. Go grab something out the barn. We're gonna have to kill it because I sinned again. Jesus ended all that by giving his life for us so that his word and his truth and his love can be written in our heart and not, you know, through animal sacrifice. Is that clear? But in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Abel brought one of the first lings of his flock, but in the course of time, it says, put Genesis 4 and 3 on the screen, it says, in the course of time, Cain, just when he got around to it, when it was convenient for him, in the course of time, Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground, and God didn't receive one, and he received the other. We're all Cain's kids, and we all have the tendency to put God in the position where, when I get around to it, and I'm, not pre I'm preaching to the folks folk to come to church today, so if you're watching online, the man of God is coming for you right now. No, really, though, um, like, 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 we need to live hardcore, all-in, God-first lives. That's the greatest joy in the world, to live that way. 
And so um, the Bible says this in Proverbs 3 and 9. It says, honor the Lord. So it's about honor. It's about reverence. It's about respect. It's about acknowledgement. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your produce. Now, they're in an agricultural society. We're not. But put God first is what it's saying. And your barns will be filled with plenty. This is a blessing that's commanded. God commands a blessing to us when we put him first. And your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine, okay? So God says put him first, but we don't put him first usually. We put us first. How many of you got a credit card at 18? Came in the mail. Come on. Now, the, the younger generation's a little bit more savvy and they're like, uh-uh. But back in the day when I was driving around town with my mullet, they give you free credit cards. And so you go and you go get, you know, whatever Starbucks was. I guess we'd go to Denny's to get coffee back then. Shoney's. To... <laughs> Y'all got it so good. You can go to meetings. Let's go meet at Starbucks. We had to go to Shoney's. <laughs> Going through all of our meetings the rest of the day smelling like bacon. All right. So you get this credit card and you start, you know, racking up the debt. It's not working good. And then, you know, you, you, you go and you, you're, you're at the store and, you know, you're with your wife and she sees a dress and she's like, ooh, let's get it on a credit card. It's like, no, we shouldn't put any more on debt. And, and the enemy's in her ear saying, yo, do it, put it on a credit card. And he's like, she's like, no, get thee behind me, Satan. And he goes, mm, looks good from back here too, girl. You better get it. Get it. Like, that's what we do. We put ourselves first. And so, you know, I grew up poor. And so because of that, I was like, oh, I'm going to not. And I didn't get myself in credit card debt, but I know a lot of people do. And so there's two mindsets you can have. They both work. The never going back mindset or the we must move forward mindset. I don't care which one motivates you. I'm never going back to that or we must move forward. But one of those two mindsets needs to be yours, okay? And so we, we want to lead people to aha moments that bring the lights on in your life. Like that's our, our growth track is totally designed to give you an aha moment where you're like, this is how I am. This is who I am. This is, this is why I'm me. This is why I do what I do. That's why the growth track is so important because it gets you into moments where you're like, that's, that's what I'm all about. That's why I did this. That's why I was created this way. That's why I'm passionate about this, okay? And so um, now Jesus wants us to put him in a place of priority. And so the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, his first, begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life, right? And so Jesus was the firstborn of the Father, and Jesus was given for us as a sacrifice for our sins. Very clear, okay? There's something special about the first time. I Googled first time songs, and there's a lot of them, but there's one that just comes to my mind that you will hear in the grocery store, and it goes like this. Feels like the first time, Woo! yeah, it feels like the very first time. I remember Renee's home sick today, snorting and coughing, and it's all kind of, I just walk by with Lysol, just spray her down. But I remember our first kiss, people, and we've kissed a lot of times since then, but let me tell you something, that first kiss, you don't even understand. It was like electricity went through my body. I'm like, oh. I was tingly. I'm serious. I knew she was the one because nobody had ever, I'm sure she felt the same, but nobody had ever made me feel that way ever because it was the first time. Boom. It was like all my brain chemicals went. And so we, we, we got to trust God with what's first because what's first is special. Like how many of you know what it takes to have six pack abs? But y'all sporting kegs today because the difference between what you know to do and what you do is about a whole lot different between the head and the heart. You know, like that's the difference. And so we got to clean up the debt in our life. We got to, you know what debt stands for? Doing everything but thinking or doing everything but tithing. Like that's kind of what debt is. It's just chained with debt. And so you need to trust God to move the decimal point in your life. Move it by tithing and he'll move it the other way in your life. And so here's the principle of first fruits, okay? First tree, don't touch it. First son of God, Jesus, was given for us. The first belongs to God for his holy purpose. With your money, with your time, with your week, with your life, with your family, put God first. He is the first of all my priorities. God is first in my life. If Renee walks away, God is first. She's number two, but she's not, you know, Jesus is number one. If she says, I ain't going to live for Jesus and walks away from me, I still got Jesus, not wanting that to happen. 
But, but Jesus is first. When my friends have walked away, Jesus was still there. Jesus is first. And so the principle starts playing out with the children of Israel. They're in slavery, in bondage, in Egypt. God raises up Moses to deliver them from that place and take them to a land of blessing, flowing with milk and honey, okay? And so, so Moses goes before Pharaoh, and we all have Pharaohs that sit on the throne of our hearts. We all have that one no, no in our hearts. We all have that but in our hearts. We all have that. Exodus 4 and 22. This is God telling Moses what to say. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my first. That's the people. That's the whole group of people. They call them Israel. Israel is my firstborn son. And I told you, let my firstborn son go so he can worship me. But you refuse to let him go. So I will kill your firstborn son. Oof. This is Old Testament. Thank God for Jesus. This is not what we deal with today. But it shows the principle of first. God is not passive about what's first. The thing about God is he's God. And if he's not Lord of everything, he's not going to be Lord of just nothing. He'll be Lord of everything and he'll be Lord of nothing in your life. And so God told Pharaoh, let my firstborn son go. And if you don't, you will reap the pressure the pain, the frustration of what's not first. And so, you know, Pharaoh didn't respond positively when, when he was told to let what's first go. And so plagues began to happen. Life got harder. They had plagues of flies and frogs and gnats and livestock dying. And then they got boils all over their body and Hail came down and destroyed all their crops. And then locusts came and ate all the crops that were left. And then darkness covered the earth and Pharaoh's heart grew harder and harder with each passing plague. This is a summary, but the 10th plague was the, the death of the firstborn. And that night, the death angel came, read about it in Genesis. The death angel came over all of Egypt and took out all the Egyptians' firstborn son because the firstborn that was God's wasn't allowed to let go and worship and do what it's supposed to do. God sent Moses with a warning. He's like, nine plagues are going to come. Just let the firstborn son go. So God wasn't vague in his command. And, and Pharaoh was dense. He's like, ah, the flies. We can live with the flies. And, and then, you know, oh, the boils. Ah, oh, just put some, <laughs> rub some dirt on it. Get some Windex. It's just boils. It'll go away. It didn't move him for some reason. Have you ever felt like somebody is trying to tell you something? Like, your life just gets out of alignment. Trouble with job, trouble with home, trouble with kids, trouble with money. You're like, what is wrong? I know life can happen, but sometimes it's because we're disobedient. Sometimes it's because we're, we, got, we got a stiffness in our souls that we won't bend to what God wants us to do. Your car keeps breaking down. It's like, oh, that's just a little trouble. At what point do we say, you know what? I might want to live in the blessing of God versus feeling the pressure of God on my life. Because God doesn't give us plagues today, but the Lord will allow pressure to come our way when we don't put him first. Amen, somebody. This is hard preaching, but y'all are strong people. So here's what God commanded. He told the children of Israel, I want you, if you want to redeem yourself from the curse that's coming, go get a lamb, kill the lamb, get tree branches, dip them in the lamb's blood, and put them over the doorpost of your house. And he says, when I see the blood on the doorpost of your house, I will pass over you. That's the concept of Passover that the, the, the Jews still celebrate to this day. It was a, a moment when you say, my priority is God, I'm going to give him this, and I'm going to be covered by the blood. It was a type of what Christ does for us. He covers us by his blood, and death can't touch us, and we're going to go to heaven one day, praise God. But that was the principle, that we need to redeem ourselves from the curse by trusting in God's word, by trusting in God's word, you remove, you remove some element of the pressure, the curse, whatever you want to call it, okay? And so Exodus 12 and 23, when the Lord goes to the land to strike down the Egyptians, the promise says he'll see the blood on the top and side of the door frame, he'll pass over, say pass over. He'll pass over that doorway and he'll not prevent the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. And so it happened and a great whale went up. Here's what you got to know. Pharaoh should have known this. It's what you need to know. If we fail to put God first, it doesn't stop God from being first. If we fail to put God first, 
it doesn't stop him from being God. God is not less God because you don't, you're not a part of his fan club. Like, God is God and you're not him and I'm not him. And so being God, he can say this is how things work and we can try to do our own thing, but honestly, God sets up order and we can either obey it or disobey it and reap the benefits or the negative benefits of it, okay? Now, let's talk about the law of first things, okay? God, told, it's a principle, it's just a principle that we can live by. Exodus 34, this is God speaking. He said, the first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males of your livestock, whether from herd or flock, Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb if you don't redeem it. Now, this little bit of Bible nerd trivia. There were five sacrifices that could be given to God. An ox, a goat, a sheep, a turtle dove, and one other thing that I can't remember. So there were these clean animals that you could sacrifice, but then you didn't just have clean animals because you had donkeys, and maybe you had camels, and maybe you had like, uh, I don't know, other animals, you know whatever, chickens. And, but God said in that time, what's first is mine. And if it's not a clean animal that you can sacrifice to me, then I want you to sacrifice a clean animal in place of that animal. So if you had a new baby donkey, like you wake up one morning and you walk out to your barn and there's a donkey out there going and saying, hey, in the morning, I'm making waffles. You know, you got a donkey. Okay. Praise God we got a donkey. Now, God doesn't accept donkey sacrifices. Let's go get a lamb, put on the altar, kill it, offer it to God as a thankful offering for what God has blessed us with because we got a new donkey up in the barn. And the kids are running around saying, oh, let me ride that donkey, donkey, let me ride that. Like, no, it's a baby donkey. And then he says this, if you don't give me what's mine, verse 20 of Exodus 34 Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb, but if you don't redeem it, break its neck. If you're not going to give me what's mine, you're not getting it, God says. If you're not going to sacrifice the lamb because you were blessed with a donkey, then, and if you don't have a lamb to give, take the donkey, break its neck. And then he says this, he said, redeem all your firstborn sons. So if you had a baby boy, like you would get a lamb and you'd take it down to the, the temple uh, and you would, you would sacrifice it. You would kill it as a thankful offering for what God had given you in the firstborn son, okay? Like this is Old Testament. This is the principle of first, okay? And God says, no one is to appear before me empty-handed, okay? This is an important principle because what is God's is God's. And if you take what's God's, you put yourself under God's pressure, and then God says, if you're not going to give me what's mine, break its neck because you can't have it. If God, God is saying, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. This is, this is the principle of first things, okay? And so the, the, the concept of a devoted offering, the concept of things devoted to God does not change. Everything you have belongs to God. Everything he blesses you with, it belongs to him. God is first. Whether you make him first or not, he's still first. Do you think you give yourself breath in your body? No. Do you think you cause the sun to come up in the morning and for the sun to set at night? No. Do you think you're the one that called the seas to come this far and stop? No. That is God. God is first and God is large and in charge. And so if you don't have an acceptable substitute in that day to redeem the good gift God gave you with, then you're supposed to break its neck. That is so, like, the, the principle there is, it's God's donkey, and he'll bring a curse on your life if you take what belongs to God. This is so strong, and it's, 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 it's the concept of Lord of all or Lord of nothing. I, I, I wanna illustrate this with you, okay? Skylar, run up here right now, I need your help. Quickly, like, like your hair's on fire. Oh, he jumped! Double low five with leg extension. <laughs> Good. Right. Skylar, look at everybody at the north side and give them a, a wave and a smile. How you doing? Hey, glad you're here today. Hey, man, glory to God. I look. Okay. <laughs> this is a lock, right? It's a combination lock, right? How many of you use these for your bicycles? Now, nah, I can look around. Y'all don't bike. I get it. You do. 
Maybe I can find it like a lock for the remote or something, you know. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm going to give you here, hold this. You see that white dot right there? Like you line it up with that white oh, dot, okay? Nice. Okay, so on this tithe envelope, <laughs> there's a combination, okay? Now, this isn't to order the combination, just the letters in the combination. So you can find the combination here and just take those, take those numbers, yeah, line it up, okay? And just pick any combination you got. Huh? D S A H. That's a P. Need an H. You're doing good. Click, 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 click. This is so great. This is exactly what I wanted. Click H. No, 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 no. Huh? Huh? No, no, you're doing, huh? no, no, no. That's a, no. no H. Huh? Yeah, no, I'm gonna go this way. Oh, okay. So the combination isn't it's not in the right order. He's trying a different order because it's not working. Okay? K D <laughs> H. Huh? Me? He ain't doing no. He ain't doing Okay, time's up, people. Let's see if it works. What? Yeah, we're on. This is a family show. Okay, so how you open it is, you you push the button and you pull. Go ahead. What's going on over there, Skylar? Oh, is it is the lock not opening? Why is the lock not opening, Skylar? Could it be that you've got the right combination in the wrong order? He's got the right combination. Thank you, sir. Give me a double high five. That's good. We're nailing it. We're killing it up here. He had the right combination, but didn't have it in the right order. God is first. Mark it down. He's not second. He's not 16th. He's not what you do after you pay all your bills. He's not what you give when you have time. He's not where you go if you can fit in your schedule. God is First. And so, my man Skyler had it off a little bit, but I want you to know that if you have the right combination in the right order, boom, everything opens up to you. I haven't dabbed in six months or more, but I felt like it today. Y'all just have to deal with it. And this is how Paul, like you're like, some people are sitting out there, armchair theologians who don't tithe, always want to be like, well, I'll tell you what, I don't see it. <sighs> okay, don't see it. I don't care. It, it, I mean, I, I want you to be blessed, but I'm doing fine. I got all the champion hoodies I want. $29.99, ride it up. I'll take it. When Paul told the church, 1 Corinthians, New Testament, 16 and 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, is that erected to the churches of Galatia? So you also are to do. I told them, now I'm telling you. You think we're better than Galatia? You think we're better than the church of Corinth? We ain't. Verse 2. On the first day of every week, on the first day, on the first day, of first importance, first, 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 God says, through his servant Paul, on the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper so that there will be no collecting when I come. Paul was so crazy. I told you last week, Jesus sat across from the offering watching people. And then Paul's here going, well, get your offerings together because I don't want to deal with it when I get there. Take care of it before I come on the first day of the week. Thank you. That's hardcore. Is it not? What if I, what if, Okay. This week, you're at, you're at the office, you know, you're doing what you do, and I'm calling, hey, how you doing? Good. Um, just wanted to tell you that you need to get your offering together for Sunday, because I, I don't want to take up an offering this week, I just want to handle it, all right? Okay, okay, have a great week, love you, bye. How bold of Paul here. I would never do that. I would never do that. But Paul's like, huh? Hey, get it together, and first day, ah, all right. And so, look, folks, I am a first fruiter. I'm a first fruiter. <laughs> I honor God in the tithe and offering before I pay my light bill. I honor God before I buy propane for my heat. I honor God first. I'm a first fruiter. Look at your neighbor and say, darn tootin', I'm first fruitin'. Say it like you mean it, darn tootin'. I'm first fruitin'. Northside, you better be darn tootin'. 
Everybody with me, and I want you to pump your fist like this. Darn tootin', I'm first fruitin'. <laughs> it's the priority of God in every area of your life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 35, 27, I read it this morning during a mic check, that God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God takes pleasure in you being blessed. He just asks you to put him first. So he says, give, and it will be given you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. We'll, <laughs> for with the measure you use, we measure back to you. This is Luke 6 and 38. So God wants to get a blessing to you. Brooke, come hither. I'm using the Old Testament. Run like your coach. She's a coach of Galena's volleyball team. Run like you're coaching him up. Run. Excellent. High five. That's a good high five. I'm better at Skyler. We'll work on Skyler. What is this? Melon. That is not a melon. It's a cantaloupe. That's why she teaches at Galena, people. I'm an art teacher. Art teacher. You're an art teacher? I draw all of my oh, She's an art teacher. Never mind. That's perfectly okay. All right. This is God's blessing. God wants to get a blessing to you. Hold it. Very good. So God wants to give you a blessing, but how many of you ever had a cantaloupe at a uh, picnic before? All right. You got to be able to discern the cantaloupe. You got to be, <laughs> got to be able to discern the cantaloupe. There's parts of this cantaloupe that are for you to eat and to sustain you. There's parts of this cantaloupe, this blessing from God that are there to protect the blessing and their seed that's designed to perpetuate the blessing. Do you like cantaloupe at all? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, you do. So I'm cutting the cantaloupe open. How many of y'all put salt on your cantaloupe? Disgusting. How many of you put salt on your watermelon? Disgusting again. Okay. So what we see here is a cantaloupe. Okay, you've got what's there for protection. Don't eat that. You're not supposed to eat that. Don't eat your protection. You know what the book of Malachi says? It says if you tithe, he'll protect your fruit. He'll protect the fruit of your vine from the devourer. There's protection in every blessing that you're not supposed to eat. It doesn't taste good to eat the protection. Would you dab for me real quick? Just dab for me because my hands are busy. Thank you. <laughs> and then there's the seed. You're not supposed to eat the seed. How many of y'all are at the picnic saying, hey, I'm going to be late, but y'all put me a covered plate together of that seed because it's so good. Anybody ever eat the seed? No. Okay. I'm going to give you the seed, Brooke. Here we go. Hold your hands out. There's the seed. Hold the seed. There's the fruit. Got to get rid of the seed here. Here we go. Take the seed. There you go. And take the seed. There's not much seed in that one, but I'll give it to you anyway. Okay, so, so, so you got seed in your hand. Come here so everybody can see it. Okay. Step right here. Everybody can see it. She's got the seed in her hand. It's not to be eaten. God says, return the tithe to me, and I'll bless you and perpetuate it. But what we do is we hold the seed tight. We hold the seed tight. That's good. You're doing good. You're good. We hold the seed tight. And when we're holding the seed tight, God says, I desire to bless you, but I can't because your hands aren't open. I'm trying to get something in your hand, but you've messed up what's good with what's not. What's good is for you. You want me to eat that? Why, why am I holding it there if I don't want you to take a bite of it? Just a bite. Just a dainty girl bite. Very good. Very good. Is it, is it, is it good? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good, but she's, she's, she's messed up her view of the blessing of God, and she's holding on to the seed, thinking the seed is the best part of it, and it's not. The best part is the fruit that God allows you to have, the protection God allows you to have. <laughs> if you don't release your seed, you can't get more blessing. But if you do release the seed, <laughs> God says, all right, now you're ready. I'm going to put more in your hands. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you more than what you could do on your own. You got to trust me. And just like it's falling out there, Malachi said, there'll be more than you have ability to hold on to. Yeah. 
Do you feel that anointing right now? I do. It's power from God. You want to take that? Sure. Yeah. Bless you, Stay my child. <laughs> Give it up for Brooke and the Galena volleyball team. Don't eat your protection. Don't eat your seed. Return the seed to God. He'll put more in your hands. Put God first. Malachi 3 and 10. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be room in the, and thereby put me to the test of the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out for you a blessing until there's no more need, I will rebuke what has come to devour your life so that it will not destroy the fruit of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then everybody gonna know, everybody gonna know, then all nations, all nations will call you blessed. That's that gum, that's one blessed so-and-so over there. I'll tell you what. Then all nations will call you blessed for you'll be a land of the light, says the Lord of hosts. I'm doing fine. I don't need anything. I'm not up here because I want something. I want you to be blessed. So everybody who will, grab your 90-day tithe challenge card. Get a pen. Grab it. Move. We're going to fill it out if you haven't already. Hold it in your hand. Let's pray. Jesus, you want to do a miracle in this church. There's more family members. There's more lost people. There's more people that are yet to find Christ. There's more buildings in this city. There's just more. And we're content with holding onto our seed rather than releasing it to receive your blessings. So God, shake your people loose. And if they, if they won't trust you, then put the pressure on them and let them feel it. Because we want to live in your blessing, not in, not in the pressure. So there's a, here's the deal about the 90 day tithe challenge. You just commit to tithe for 90 days. If God doesn't abundantly bless you during that time, everything we have record of that you gave, we'll give it back. Okay. You hear me? It's, it's, if you, if you tithe for 90 days and God doesn't show you himself, we will write you a check back and say, okay, here you go. It's that simple. Only because I want you to know what God can do for your life. So <clears throat> there's three three boxes. You can choose one. The first one is I commit to the to, to tithe challenge. I'll give at least 10% of my income for 90 days. Done. And then the second one is starting now. I'll commit to tithe for a year to begin a lifestyle tithing. Some of you just forgot or just stopped. You just need to get back on the, get on, back on the wagon. Quit trying to ride God's donkey. And so starting now, I'll do it for a year. And then I'll give a, this is for people that are, this is a discipline for you, but you just kind of stopped at that discipline. The Bible says tithes and offerings. So the tithe isn't like, tithing is not generosity. Tithing is returning to God what's his. It's not generosity. Generosity starts at like 10.01% or 11%. That's when generosity starts. This is a call to generosity. And so I am adding another percentage point to my giving. So I'm doing that. Now I'm writing my name on it as you should be right now. Your name, not my name, your name. Don't commit me for more. I'm plenty committed. And then legibly write your email address where, where your grandmother could read it. And when the plate comes by, I want you to put it in the plate and really trust God this year with your money because God wants to do amazing things in your life. You've seen the blessing of generosity. You've seen the heart of a God who puts you first because he gave his firstborn son to redeem you. You see the love of God in that he gave you his best. And so I am just calling our whole church to focus in on the goodness of God, north side, south side, wherever you are, and trust him to be the goodness that he already is. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus, in this room right now, there are people that struggle with the whole concept 
of trusting in you. They struggle with the idea that you could be good and that you'd be worthy to be trusted. God, there's people in this room that have trusted you for their salvation, but they won't trust you with their money. Convict us of that, God. It's just not a reality we want to live under. Lord, for every soul in this place that has felt the pull of God on their heart, and to, hey, you're, you're feeling it and you're pushing it off. I would be, it's a dangerous thing for God to deal with your heart and you just say, no, 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 don't do that. God's got better things for you. He really does. And so that pull of that pull you feel on your heart is a pull of devotion. It's the pull of God calling you higher. It's the pull of God calling you to himself. I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus. I'm asking you to quit having God sign a prenup with you. Like I'll do this, but I won't do that. That's not any kind of relationship you want to be in. Give your whole heart to Jesus. And for everybody in this room right now, while every head is bowed, everybody at the north side, every head is bowed, we're going to pray and trust God to be the answer and the increase that we need. Pray with me out loud. Jesus, I surrender. I trust you and I trust your plan. I want to be saved. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I confess that you're Lord of my life and I give you my everything today. Help me where I'm weak. Lead me to eternal life. From this day forward, I am yours in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've given your heart to Jesus today at every location, lift your hand high right now and declare it. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. Keep it high. God bless you. Praise God. Clap your hands to Jesus. Let's stand and worship God today. I love you so much. Stand.